Okay, I've got a nice tight close-up shot here. As you see, the switch I'm going to use is a single pole switch. Two terminals on the right on one side. Two brass colored terminals. Now, as I talked about position one, position two, the terminals are on the right. And notice this switch does have a ground terminal. So that means you do have to ground that switch. That's kind of the rule of thumb. If there's a terminal provided, use it and put a ground on it. So we're going to deal with our ground wire splice first. And I'm going to have to have two pigtails coming off of this splice. One to go to each switch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is here take the longest ground wire I have out of all these four. And I'm going to wrap it clockwise about 180 degrees around that screw, the ground screw in the plastic box. Now some may question why you have a ground screw in a plastic box, but as you can see this here network of tabs there are, they are metal, and that's where you screw in your device screws to mount your screw or your receptacle. So that grounds the frame of the switch or the receptacle, as well as the ground wire, but it's just a, a little extra safety there that you do have a ground on the tab in case your ground wire does happen to break loose. So you do, get, you do have to ground the box strap here. And again, there's a terminal, so you use it and get a ground on it. So as you can see, I've got that wrapped around the screw about 180 degrees, nice and snug. Now I want to splice all these four ground wires together along with two pigtails. And those pigtails I'm going to use to go to my switches. So here's the shortest wire out of all six here now. I'm going to bring it, bring them all even, and then I'm going to cut them roughly all even right now. I've got six wires displaced together. Now let's get that up so you can see it. Gently, you don't want to squeeze too hard on your pliers here, but you want to start these wires all twisting together. Nice and even. Now see that? I've got a nice twisted pattern to the wires here. I'm going to cut them off again evenly. Now I'm going to spin my marette on there. So I've got them all even, nice and tight already. This marette is good for this many conductors, so they're a good universal marette to use. Made by Ideal, these ones, I believe. They have quite a wide range of conductors that they're good for, but with the product material, Packaging usually tells you how many 14 gauge wires you can splice under one wire nut. And they have nice little wings here so you don't have to use a tool to tighten them up. You can do it with your fingers. So make a nice snug splice. Some of the package material on, on morettes or wire nuts will even recommend that you don't pre-twist the wires together. I've never been a firm believer in that unless you just have two conductors to, to splice. I always like to make sure they're twisted together, ends are all even before I put my wire nut on, and I like to snug them up good and tight. As I was taught in school, an electrical splice should be as mechanically sound as it is electrically sound, so you shouldn't be able to pull these apart. It should be as strong as the original conductor when you're done splicing. So I tuck those wires into the back of the box. You want them out of the way, you don't want any bare wires sticking out that might touch the terminals of the screw when you mount, uh, or sorry, the terminals of the switch when you push that switch back into the box. So I tuck them nice and flat into the bottom of the box. And I've got two tails ready to tie to the switches. Next we'll do the neutrals.